I'm a big fan of Anki, the world's most popular flashcard app. Like most security-minded folks, I decided to see if Anki could be hacked. A lot of people say add-ons can be malicious, but shared decks can't be. These are the flashcard decks you download from other people or on Anki web. I mean, people trust Anki so much, they put their entire social security numbers in it. They use it for a diary. So one day, a friend and I sat down to see if Anki really is secure. We found a hack that gives us full remote access to your computer. We could watch you through your webcam, we could get your banking information, and all you have to do is study our flashcards. Hi, my name's Autumn, I'm a professional hacker. If you want to learn more about hacking or cybersecurity in general, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I also study computer science at university, and like most computer scientists, I use LaTeX to write my dissertation. Now, Anki uses LaTeX as well, so let's start there. We first tried payload all the things to find a LaTeX payload that would just work. Payload all the things is a sort of GitHub repo of a bunch of payloads you can use to do cool things. So for example, some of the payloads are remote code execution gain full access to a system, and others are things like write files. None of these really worked out well for us, so we decided just to move on. What we did notice in the code was Anki has a, a naughty list of fanned commands, fanned LaTeX commands, and we decided to start there and see if we could activate one of these naughty list words. Normally when a program has a list of commands you're not allowed to use, you should try and run those commands to see what happens or try and get around that list because obviously they don't want you to use it, so you should try and use it and see what happens. So we saw the regular expression which blocks these commands and we decided to try and get around it, but in the documentation for Anki we saw something more interesting. Anki says when you lose the tech you should tell it to install missing packages by default and to also run as administrator. When you install a missing package, that missing package over Override the block list. So by default, it's insecure. You just need to write some LaTeX that says import this package and then run this code, and then you ignore the block list. So Anki's default behavior here is to allow attackers to run banned commands, which isn't a very good idea. It wasn't very fun, so we went back to breaking the regular expression. We wanted to run the command open out, which lets us write files, and it's a banned command. So we did what any good hacker did. We took the hex character for the letter T and we replaced it into the command. It turns out LaTeX compiles this command at compile time. So it goes 74 into open out, turns into the 74 into a T. And this works actually really well. So we're now able to run LaTeX commands. Uh, <laughs> took us maybe five minutes of work. With open out, we can do some cool things like fill up the user's disk space if we hate you. We can write loads and loads of files infinitely. We can create a malicious Anki package, which then gets imported later on, or we can create files in general for anything we want. Looking around the LaTeX package ecosystem some more, there's actually an unbanned command we can use quite easily called a betum input. This is technically not in default LaTeX. So imagine it's like in Python doing import os, os.system. OS is not by default in Python, but it is installed with every Python distribution. And it's the same for LaTeX. So verbatim in exists in every LaTeX distribution. So we decided to import it. Verbatim input lets us read any file and write it to an image. And then we can upload that image to the web server using JavaScript. So now we have a write and read for LaTeX. You can also use verbatim input to find system information. Honestly, it's kind of boring to do all this because we already have write and read and those are pretty big, like important hacks. And so we decided to sort of move on and find something more interesting. We found if we had an older version of LaTeX installed, we could just get remote code execution on like straight away uh, through flashcards. Um, but again, this is way too boring. We're, we're hackers, right? But we also want to have fun when doing this. So we decided to move on. So Anki flashcards run JavaScript. So we decided to look at some JavaScript exploits. A uh, very popular one we used a lot was you could use JavaScript to make requests. So you can exfiltrate data any way you want. If you use verbatim input to download an, a file into an image, you can send that image up to any server you own using JavaScript. You can also call the ChatGPT API and gaslight users. For example, you could change the dosage of adrenaline in a flashcard and have them accidentally fail their exams. And this was absolutely hilarious. But again, it wasn't, it wasn't really a fun exploit, so we decided to move on. What we did discover was that we could actually upload any file. So originally we thought we could only upload images because you have to upload them from a flashcard and flashcards should only contain images or like sound files. It turns out media and Anki is anything at all. It could be a file. Um, there's no rules for this in the code base. So you could just upload any file you wanted really via JavaScript, which is fun. So a fun thing we could do is we could upload the prefs21.db database, which contains the username and password of your Anki web account. Now, any security minded folk would go, okay, but the database would be hashed, right? Here's a comment from the Anki maintainer on hashing passwords in Anki. Let me read it for you. I feel that's not a lot of value to hashing passwords in this case, as if you're following best practice and not reusing them on other sites. The only way they can get compromised is if the machine is compromised, and then a hashed password does not help you at all. Um, for reference, we're able to use JavaScript to upload the database, which does not require a compromised machine. Yeah, 
so they're unhashed apparently. We did not care that much. This is so boring. It's really fun to hack into a database and get like hashed passwords, but when they're unhashed, it's like common man, really? Like this is so boring. But this was a comment on a pull request, add hashed passwords. And this happened two weeks before we found this exploit. So two weeks before we would have been able to get the database without hashed passwords, but now it's hashed, so it is a little bit fun. However, here's the really fun part. Hash passwords in Anki are an advanced feature not enabled by default. You have to enable it in the code, it's not even in the UI. Here's a documentation page on it. In my emails to the maintainer, he also says hash passwords is work exactly like how we imagine them to, which is not very well at all. We also found a reflected cross-site scripting attack. That's a bit too advanced for this uh, YouTube video, so check out the blog post if you want to read that. Again, we got distracted and very bored very fast because unhashed passwords are not fun. Um, the reflected cross-site scripting was fun, but it's a bit too hard. We knew that there was something really, really good in this code base, a remote code execution bug. We've seen how messy the code base is. As hackers, we gain a feeling that there is something here, we just need to unearth it. And what you know, we did find a really fun bug. Okay, imagine this. You're on a Japanese learning Discord, and someone says, hey, I have a new flashcard deck, it's the top 100 words. So you download it, you study the first flashcard. Now an attacker has unlimited access to your computer via the Anki program. They could watch you through your webcam, they could download your files, they could write files, they could mess, ar mess around with you a lot. They have a remote access trojan into your computer that you downloaded and ran willingly. And because it runs under Anki, antivirus won't actually pick it up because the antivirus trusts Anki and you trust Anki. Let's run through this remote code execution. Anki uses MPV player, which allows you to play audio files in cards. In Windows, instead of reusing the same MPV player, it runs a new one every single time it wants to play some new audio. So it runs a command mpv dash dash no terminal sound.mp3, where sound.mp3 is the found file made by the user. Important to note is that sound.mp3 is a username file, so you can change this name however you want and you can have it in Anki however you want. Anki does not choose a name for you. Now you may think, can I change sound.mp3 to something like ampersand ampersand ping.1.1.1.1? And will this run ping? This is very popular for shell environments, but Anki runs this under poppin, subprocess.poppin, and subprocess.poppin is not a shell environment. It just runs this one single command. There is no other like tools in this environment. It's just MPV and that's it. So you can't use the double ampersand to get around this, um, which makes it a little bit more fun, a little bit harder. So we had a look at the MPV documentation and see what we could actually run here. There's a command called command, which lets you run any command whatsoever on the system, which seems really fun. But this was in a newer version of MPV and Anki uses a really outdated version from 2021. So when Anki updates the MPV version, it'll actually be ha easier to hack them. But right now it's harder. Now, funnily enough, MPV also lets you run Lua scripts using dash dash script, any script you want. But to do that, you have to replace sound MP3 with dash dash script equals run.lua. And because there's no MP3 file to play, MPV will just exit, it doesn't like it. It only, will only let you run if it has a file to play music from a video. So that's kind of protected there and it's a bit annoying to be honest. There's also a command called dash dash idle, which tells MPV to just sort of idle, like run all the configuration stuff, like the Lua file, and then just idle and sit there and do nothing and don't bother about playing any music. But you can't run two commands at once because there's no shell environment, so you can't do double ampersand. You can only run one command here, which is really annoying. Thankfully again, MPV has another command, dash dash include config. This lets you run a config file whenever MPV starts. So in this config file, we have two things. We have idle, um, which tells MPV not to, not to exit. And we have the Lua script, which we want to run, which contains our Lua payload, which gives us full remote access to your computer. Now, the next problem is how do we get the config file onto a user's computer using flashcards? There's two ways we can do this. We could use the latex exploits from earlier to write the file to the user's computer, and then we could read that file. But there's actually an easier way. Earlier, I said Anki Media can be anything at all, including executable files. So what we do is we bundle the configuration file into Anki, as a media file, and then we just run that media file through Anki. Now, when I send you this flashcard and you click it and study it, your computer opens itself up to me. I now have full access to your computer. I can run any Lua code I want, including a reverse shell, which means I can run any command I want on your computer under the Anki user. And Anki is trusted by antivirus. This is great for me. Now, how did Anki fix this? Because of course I can't post this video unless Anki has fixed it. For LaTeX, they've simply made a dialogue that says, by the way, this is insecure, and they removed the bad commands list. 
probably a good idea to tell users not to really trust LeetTech if you want to have infinite trust in some flashcards. And for the MPV stuff, they use a POSIX standard dash dash to say everything to the left is the command and everything after is just like user input. So this tells Anki, ignore whatever the user writes, don't execute it as a command. It's like, give it straight to the file, give it straight to MPV as a file. Conclusion, there's definitely many more hacks in Anki. We got so bored doing this. There were so many times we were like, oh, this is way too easy, unhashed passwords. We can run any JavaScript we want. LaTeX has like loads of stuff as well. Boring. We haven't explored every single avenue, so we encourage everyone to go and explore the avenues for themselves. If you're interested in getting started in hacking, this is definitely one of the ways you can do it. There's no bug bounty program, but it's pretty fun to be honest to hack a flashcard app that everyone loves. Our blog post contains much more information as well as the actual code and proof of concepts that we use for this. So read them if you want to learn more about these hacks. And please subscribe if you're interested in cybersecurity content. My name is Meet Autumn, I'm a professional hacker. Thank you.